إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آل بيته وصحابته الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers and sisters, as always we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him and we thank Him and we seek His assistance and we seek His forgiveness And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His final messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, dear brothers and sisters يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا O people, be fully aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who has created you from a single soul Meaning Adam alayhi salam And from him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created his wife for him And that is Hawa alayhi salam and from them both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given creation to multitudes of men and women and be fully aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one in whose name you seek the one in whose name you seek your rights and your obligations and fulfill the duties or responsibilities of family for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watchful over you dear brothers and sisters as most of you, if not all of you, are aware, just a week ago, we passed, we heard the news of the passing away of one of the most influential people of da'wah in the West. And that is Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for all his work. And this person who grew up in Winnipeg, spent some time in Ottawa as a youth, and memorize the Quran not too far away from here, in, actually in Cornwall, where the madrasa still stands today, and who lived here and contributed to the work of da'wah locally and on international level, I thought it would be beneficial to learn a bit from his life and his effect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken him at a young age of 47 years old, not too old, but subhanAllah the effects and the positive impact that he's had on people all over the place is a testament to the things that he did. So let's rewind and go back to his life and learn a little bit because there are lessons to be learned for all of us, dear brothers and sisters. You know, it was 1976 in the frigid city of Winnipeg where he, as a baby, grew up with his family and he started getting engaged at the Muslim community from a very young age he says that he has his father to thank for for a lot of the things he's done he said he remembers being young and winnipeg being very cold and snowing there a lot but his father would always make it a point to take him to the mosque and pray in the mosque his father would go out shovel the snow shovel the car out of the snow make sure it's ready to go then take him with him to the mosque is it mandatory Maybe not, but it's about instilling life lessons, dear brothers and sisters. The things that we do with ourselves, the things we do with our children can have consequences, whether positive or negative. So don't just dismiss, dismiss the kids because they are simply kids. He was young and he would have rather prayed at home, but his father had a mission. He taught him to come to the mosque as much as possible. It doesn't matter how cold, how much snow there was. Because this is terbiyah, dear brothers and sisters. This is terbiyah that we need. Terbiyah, upraising, upbringing kids is not about providing, just providing food and drink and shelter and clothes. No, it goes further than that. It's difficult to, for you, for yourself in the beginning to go to the mosque and then to have your children with you. Someone gets hungry, someone wants to sleep, someone is tired, someone's clothes is dirty, someone's, you know it. But this is what pays off in the long run, dear brothers and sisters. Take care of these kids, although the through all the trouble that you have to go through, but inshallah it will pay off. That's number one, attachment to the masjid and the community. 
He says, sometimes we used to go to the mosque and there is nobody in the mosque except for my father and I. But we still went to the mosque. And his dad still made it a point to connect him from a very young age to be in the mosque and the Muslim community. That's number one. Number two, he's just an ordinary kid, yet his father had a vision for him to at least memorize the Quran. So he sent him from Winnipeg all the way here to Cornwall to memorize the Quran at a very young age. I know people have a lot of stories. People will say, you know, memorizing at a young age might do this, might do that. It's hard on the family. It's hard all of this. But the point is, dear brothers and sisters, is this one of the legacies of this ummah? Is our children throughout history always memorize the Quran and parts of the Quran from a very, very young age? And that what, what effect it has on them is that it gives them self-confidence. It gives them this relationship with the Quran. It lets them know that they are capable of doing big things. And it paves the way for success in the future. So don't just look at this issue, dear brothers and sisters, as, you know, memorizing without understanding. Or, you know, it may delay their studies. Or it may do this or do that. That's all not correct, dear brothers and sisters. If a kid gets exposed to Quran at a very young age, chances are that they will succeed in life and they will succeed in all areas of life. You know, we can continue to treat our children thinking that they're very little and they don't understand much and kept telling them, you know, Alif, Arna, Ba, Batta and stuff and suffice with that. Or we can really teach them that you are capable of doing more things. And once we teach them that thing, it will go far away and will have positive impact on the child and the family and society at large and also the ummah so that was the second thing that his father rahimahullah hafizahullah was doing for his kid sheikh muhammad sharif alayhi rahmatullah and the third thing he says the sheikh muhammad allah rahimahu, he says you know if it was up to me i probably would not have done anything my father applied for me got my visa for to go to university spoke with people through different connections he was able to admit me into Islamic studies and I went and it was a single most factor thing that happened in his life that affected not just hundreds or thousands, well, like hundreds of thousands of people are affected by this mission. So dear brothers and sisters, the first lesson for all of us is that to take care of our children. Take the time. It's hard. It's difficult. You know, it drives you nuts. But this is what you have. After we die, and we all die, dear brothers and sisters, we will die. The legacy that continues after us is our children. If we raise them well, if we teach them well, chances are that they will remember us with all goodness and they will make dua for us. And every good that they have done, it will be, inshallah, in our deeds, in our scales, our scale of good deeds. He, rahimahullah, passed away in salah. Salatul Maghrib on the eve of Friday. Salatul Maghrib on the eve of Friday, dear brothers and sisters. And this is something that everyone prays for, to have husn al-khatimah, to live, to exit this life in such a way, in a good way, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you even more and more. But dear brothers and sisters, husn al-khatimah doesn't come as an accident. It doesn't happen like this, out of the blue, out of nowhere. Husn al-khatimah becomes a result of something that you do consistently, day in and day out, where you live your life as, as piously as possible, where you, do your, where you do your salawat, where you read your Quran, when you treat people fairly and nicely and generously, and you keep making dua time after time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you this end, this beautiful, this sweet end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us, dear brothers and sisters, husn al khatima And from the things that we mention of this man, rahimahullah, is that everyone speaks of his akhlaq and morals and how he did the work for the sake of Allah. We don't know. We don't know the intentions, brothers and sisters. Seemingly something could be done for the sake of Allah, when the, but if the heart is corrupt, we, it's not for the sake of Allah. But there are indications that say whether a person was sincere in that work or not. One of those things, dear brothers and sisters, is the issue of the ego. Some people, when they want to do good, 
They want to make sure that the people see them and present themselves and put their names everywhere and say, I did this and I did that. And if still people don't see, they take selfies of them, themselves doing good and they post them on social media to tell the people that we did good work. But in fact, many, many of the people that dealt with Sheikh Muhammad, rahimahullah, say we know he was not about ego. He would come, he would realize that there is a strength that you have and will work with you without anybody knowing to improve you. So at the end of the day, the work for Islam is supposed to be the work for Islam. And as long as somebody is doing the work for Islam, you don't have to be in the picture. One of the things that, dear brothers and sisters, that divide our societies and our communities is this hub, this love, this likeness to be in the spotlight, where you want your name to be attached to goodness. If you want to do good, that's good. But your name doesn't have to be mentioned, dear brothers and sisters. Your, your, your picture doesn't have to be shown. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَصَصْنَاهُمْ وَمِنْهُمْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there are prophets and messengers of Allah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the name to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their stories are there in the Quran and the Sunnah. But there are those who we don't know their names. We don't know their stories. And it doesn't matter if we do, if we do or we don't. Because they were meant to convey the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did. So what we need to do, dear brothers and sisters, is we need to hold the banner of Islam high. Everybody must come together in support of that. But it doesn't matter who gets the shout out at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if people recognize you or they don't recognize you. Because ultimately what we want, we want the recognition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you get that recognition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everything else is useless and it doesn't count and it won't benefit you. And another thing we learn from this great man, dear brothers and sisters, is excellence in doing da'wah. He always said that Islam deserves the best. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, dear brothers and sisters, Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has demanded from us to have ihsan, to do things properly with excellence, with everything that we do. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yuhibbu idha amala amalu, idha amala ahadukum amalan an yudqinah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for any of you who does something is to do it with excellence, to do it with the best of capabilities. And he, rahimahullah, would always say, da'wah deserves the best. Islam deserves the best. Just because we are volunteers in our work for Islam doesn't mean we give anything, right? Make sure that when you take some responsibility on, you do it with utmost ihsan. Dedicate yourself for it so you do it well. When you do it well, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the effort and lets the people benefit from it. But if you do a whatever job, then sometimes, if not all the time, you end up doing more harm than good. Ibadallah, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-aliyya al-azim li wa lakum wa lisa'iri al-muslimina min kulli dhanbin fastaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله عباد الله يقول الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O people, we have created you from male and a female, and we have made you into nations and tribes so that you may get to know one another. And the best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those with the most taqwa, those with the most cognizance of Allah, being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what they do. Dear brothers and sisters, it was brought to my attention yesterday that today is supposed to be the national day for the Igor people, our brothers and sisters in East Turkestan. And that what must be mentioned today in the Jum'ah, in the Friday sermon, so we all know and remember this case of our brothers and sisters who are abused in East Turkestan, 
or West China, if you will. The Chinese have taken control of that part of the land in 1949. And since then, Muslims have been targeted just because of their faith. And over the years, things got, have gotten really bad, and especially since 2017, where the government has taken new action to really strip Islam from the hearts and the minds and the bodies of our brothers and sisters there. Mosques have been demolished. Mosques have been there standing there for hundreds of years. Families have been separated. Men and women have been sterilized. Kids have been taken, declared as orphans when their parents are still alive and they are taken to be you know, raised with non-Muslim families. The Chinese, government, the Chinese government continues to treat Islam as quote-unquote a mental illness and that people need to leave it. And they have all sorts of things that they are doing to our brothers and sisters there to take them away from faith to strip them out of their faith. The sad news, dear brothers and sisters, is our brothers and sisters have to endure all of this. But inshallah, they will have huge amounts of rewards and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and they will end up in paradise. And that will be their solace for all the troubles that they are going through. And ultimately, this is what we, this is what we care for, the hereafter. But at the same time, we must condemn the actions of the Chinese government. We have to speak out to our political representatives. We have to speak to the people in the parliament to do more to stop this genocide. Literally, there are concentration camps for our brothers and sisters there. So we must do, we must pray for them. We must do, make dua for them. We must call upon government representatives to do more to stand up to China and other countries that are oppressing Muslims in their lands. And this is an issue that we must not forget. It is Allah's will, alhamdulillah, that our pain or suffering is in many different places. But that, that should not give us or make us lose hope. What we must do is increase our dua, increase our dua, and talk to people who can make a difference. We must lobby, dear brothers and sisters. If we don't stand up for ourselves and our issues, unfortunately, the bad news is nobody's going to stand up for us. But what, me, what, but, what me, but what we must realize, that is, it all, it's all in Allah's plan. It's all a part of Allah's plan. What does this mean? Dear brothers and sisters, in 2017, Allah gave me, gave me the opportunity to, to visit southern Spain. And as most of you would know, that Spain was Muslim for 800 years. 800 years. And then a genocide happens against the Muslims. Muslims were forced to change, to change their faith. They were forced away. They were killed. Their mosques were, you know, demolished and destroyed and all of that. But what happened? What happened after that, dear brothers and sisters? Islam is making a comeback in Spain. And Islam is making a comeback today in Spain, not just because immigrants, people from you know, other Muslim countries are migrating there, no. Wallahi, dear brothers and sisters, we came across a Spanish man who converted to Islam, but he said when he converted to Islam back in the 70s, and Spain was coming out of a dictatorship, Similarly, it's the same what was happening in China. There were, he came across Muslims that have preserved their Islam for hundreds and hundreds of years secretly. Wallahi, hundreds and hundreds of years, they have preserved their Islam secretly. Generation after generation. Same thing happened in the former USSR republics. Where Muslims were forced out of Islam, banned from learning the Quran, banned from learning Arabic. Closing mosques, demolishing mosques, doing all of these things. But what happens? As soon, as soon as Allah wills for some of that hardship to be removed away, Islam springs right back. So don't worry. Don't worry about Islam in that part of the world or in any other parts of the world. Worry about yourself. 
Let us worry about ourselves. Do the best that we can for ourselves and for our fellow brothers and sisters. Make dua for them. Mobilize. So at least we have that concern for our ummah. As Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that whomever of you sees a munkar, something bad happening, let them change it with their hand. And if they can't, then let them change it with their tongue. And if they can't, then let them change it with their heart. And that is al-af al-iman. So dear brothers and sisters, same thing may happen to us here one day. You don't know. You don't know. There were so many places where Muslims had safety and security and all of that. And all of that. But when it happens, it just happens. So make dua for those people. Protect yourselves. Protect your families. And always work hard for the deen. When you work hard for the deen, dear brothers and sisters, you're in fact working for yourself. So yes, be selfish. Work for your deen. Protect yourself and protect your families, dear brothers and sisters. On another note, dear brothers and sisters, today is the last day of the Hijri year, 1443. Tomorrow, a new year starts, 1444. 1,444 years since the Hijrah of the Prophet وسلم, from Mecca to Medina. From being an environment that was oppressive to the Muslims, where things were done in secret, to where Islam really flourished and spread all over the world. And that's why, dear brothers and sisters, we are Muslims today. So let us take some time to reflect about our lives so far. What is our plan for the future on individual levels, on family level? On an ummah level, as we age, we must not think of, you know, just another day passing by. If you have done good so far, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show gratitude to Allah and ask Allah for more. And you ha if you have not been doing too well, then it's time to sit down with yourself to see how you can fix the course of your life before the end comes and it becomes too late. Dear brothers and sisters, we need one another. The ummah needs every single one of you. Don't think that you know you, you are just one person in the midst of 1.7 billion people and that you can't do anything. No, that's not correct. If everyone does their part, then the whole ummah will be better. If I say, no, it's not me, and you say, no, it's not you, and so on says, not me, and everybody says that, then the ummah will continue to be at this dire state. One of the brothers has told the administration of the mosque to make dua for his son, to give him guidance, to show him the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to give him that nur. And we make dua for him, and we make dua for everyone that is seeking Allah to be part of their lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us closer to him. And as a testament to that, I would love to share with you, dear brothers and sisters, that after Salat al-Jumu'ah, we will be conducting a shahada of somebody new joining the ummah and following the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So do stay behind and witness this event, inshaAllah. Ibadallah, inna Allah ta'ala amarakum bi amrin bada bihi bi nafsih, wa thanna bi malaikatihi wa thalatha bikum faqala azza man qail, إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على حبيبنا وقائدنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين اللهم أحنا على الإسلام وأمتنا على الإيمان اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا واقض ديوننا واهدنا يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا اللهم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا اللهم من الراشدين اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا أواخرها واجعل خير أيامنا يوم نلقاك يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم عليك بالظالمين فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم عليك بالظالمين فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم عليك بالظالمين فإنهم لا يعجزونك يا حي يا قيوم يا 
ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم وحد صفوفنا وألف بين قلوبنا ووحد كلمتنا يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة